And she said, Michelle, if one in five households would say that, that they've actually changed their purchasing behavior because of this particular program, you should feel thrilled. To say three in five, that means we've had a cultural shift in our community. People are thinking local first. This is Peak Moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson. My guest today is from Bellingham, Washington, with an interesting organization. Her name is Michelle Long, and she's Executive Director of Sustainable Connections. We've got another guest, too. This is Anna, the lap cat, who's 18 years old. She thought she'd like to join us for at least part of this. Michelle, mm -hmm. thank you for joining me. Well, you're welcome. It's nice to be here with you and with Anna. Thank you. So what is Sustainable Connections? Sustainable Connections is a membership organization of uh, local independent businesses. So we are nearing on 600 business members today, wow. and all of them are committed to transforming and modeling an economy built on sustainable business practices. We have uh, construction companies, we have manufacturing businesses, farmers, mm -hmm. retailers, service providers, the whole gamut, all as members sharing the same mission. Let's go back a little bit. How old is this organization? To get 600 members is a lot, it seems. Well, we signed up our first member April of 2002. So. so? It's not yet six years old, a uh, little over five years old. And what do you mean by local? Uh, by local, we say, are you uh, living in our community? Mm -hmm. Do you reside mm -hmm. there? Does more than 50% of the ownership live there? And therefore, we're able to meet with you, with, with you as the business owner, to uh, reimagine anything about your business or our economy. And uh, are they able to... Uh, make any decision for their business? Do they have uh -huh. full autonomy to uh -huh. choose the potatoes for their french fries or uh, whether or not they're going to have biodegradable cups or how they're going to um, uh, share profits with employees or not? Full autonomy to make any decision for their business and for our community. So why would a business want to be part of this? What, do you, what does your organization give to them, provide for them? We do education, we do connections, and we do market development promotion. So our members are interested in uh, new opportunities. These are folks who recognize that uh, the world is changing and mm -hmm. that uh, consumers are changing the way they shop what they're interested in, and uh, we, we are no longer under the illusion that we have unending natural resources or uh, that, that production processes that are uh, linear rather than circular make sense. You know, a lot of communities have found that luring that one Goliath into town to save the day in yeah. jobs is not working anymore. Uh, and today's businesses, uh, many of the folks within my uh, membership organization, uh, say, what are the new opportunities? What, where is business heading for tomorrow? What are the opportunities of a sustainable economy? And we help to provide them education, hands-on specific technical assistance. And by that I mean uh, bringing in the right folks to teach architects how to design for uh -huh. maximum solar gain, or bringing in the right folks to meet with a farmer to talk about weed management and organic farming. Mm -hmm. uh, very specific uh, education that they need to take advantage of new opportunities. For any kind of, I mean, you're talking about different kind of business practices here. I, I heard you talk about people management, you know, the human services side of a business. Right. Um, use of materials. You talked about the whole cycle. You're talking about not just a lot of waste, but bringing back and using materials again. I mean, this, so it's whatever is needed for different kinds of businesses? Exactly. We go sector by sector within our economy. Mm -hmm. And given our own staff capacity, we, we, as we grow as an organization, we're taking on a new sector. And within each of those sectors, doing those three things, education, technical assistance, connections, connecting those businesses okay. to each other, okay. many of whom have uh, lo lots of uh, experience uh, with any of the topics that we're working on and can teach each other, and then market development is the third thing we do, and that means uh, promotion and getting the consumers and government in our community to want more of what we're helping businesses to do. So if we're helping businesses to grow more organic food or to build green homes, we need people to want those things. That's right. That's for sure. Let's go back for a second to the connections, uh, the networking part of right. this. What, what ways do you do that for businesses? 
We have five program areas. Uh, we work in, um, uh, I, I mentioned the green building program, mm -hmm. a food and farming program. Okay. We actually have an energy program mm -hmm. and uh, a, a think local, buy local, be local, a think local first uh, marketing program and a sustainable business development program. Mm -hmm. That sustainable business development program uh, does a lot to bring businesses together at conferences, peer mentoring, um, uh, recognizing that the first rule of sustainability in business is you can stay in business. <laughs> yes. So yes, without profits, good. you have no license to be in business. So uh, yeah. we help those businesses uh, to be successful. We want these businesses to be the most successful businesses in our area because of their values. Uh, so we have a, a full day spring business conference, monthly get togethers for folks that want to connect. Um, and then, uh, like I mentioned, these peer mentoring sessions. Where what, one, ha what happens there? In a well, a business may share a challenge that they're facing. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it could be anything, a marketing challenge, a sales challenge, a uh, operational challenge. Um, and depending on the challenge, we bring in a panel of other business owners, their oh. peers, who, who have expertise in that area. And they give them free peer mentoring. It's I would imagine that that... You, what you're doing is you're really building, strengthening a network of Absolutely. people knowing right. who's available. Right. Do you do that kind of networking also so that people can get more supplies or services by other locals? I mean, I would imagine that's a well, goal. Well, sure. So, for instance, within the Food and Farming Program, we do the largest uh, trade meeting in, uh, for, for uh, food buyers and food producers in ah. our region, bringing ah. folks together, and we do a, an accompanying wholesale directory so that uh, farmers or fishermen or uh, cheesemakers or anyone that produces food in our region uh, can share this is what I have to offer and when, which times of year. Mm -hmm. And the buyers can say this is what I need and when I'd like to buy those things. And then at this trade meeting they can put a name with a face. It, it helps yeah. to soften that first uh, cold call yeah. and, um, and we also provide some sort of inspirational or educational message at those trade meetings too. So going to the, to the, the uh, marketing mm -hmm. stuff that you do for people, mm -hmm. tell us about Buy local or think local first. How did how did you get going on that? The whole premise of our organization, the whole premise of this of sustainable connections, is built on a model of reciprocity. Uh, mm -hmm. That means mm -hmm. that we are supporting our local business owners in being great stewards of our place, mm -hmm. and in turn asking our community to support those local business owners. Okay. Okay. We do a lot to help businesses with four categories. We have an online resource center that uh, and, and a decal that goes in their front door that's, that is listed is broken down into strong community, healthy environment, meaningful employment, and buying local first. So all the businesses are looking at what can I do to be to strengthen community? What can I do to minimize my environmental impact, etc.? And then here's some resources to do that. In turn, we say to our community, please support these local businesses. Who are your friends and neighbors? Can you think local first? That's our vision, simply. Uh, if I need a product or service, can I first think of a local that may be able to offer that to me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, and that program entails everything from uh, seasonal promotional materials, posters that come out for Valentine's mm -hmm. Day that say, be a local lover, or, <laughs> or uh, St. Patrick's Day, uh, a local limerick, uh, St. Patrick's Day limerick, uh, we have uh, directories that we put into our newspapers a couple times a year that mm -hmm. list all the businesses by uh, product or category so folks know who offers what in our community. Uh, we do some events and we have a, now a Think Local, Buy Local, Be Local, Be mascot. And he'll show up at parades or at uh, the farmer's market so and pass out really logo stickers. So you're really putting a lot of attention to, in your whole community. I noticed when we visited mm -hmm. Bellingham last year, mm -hmm. stickers in the windows that That's says, right. Think local first. Right. You know, That's right. be local. And I, I, you know, it seemed to me like a, um, a way for people to know, oh, I'd rather go into this shop if I care about such things right. as sustainability. And I probably will meet friendly people who are local. Right. You, going back for a second to the advantages of local, you've mm -hmm. talked about, uh, my guess is you're building a lot of community mm -hmm. strength here. Because mm -hmm. you're build, starting with your business community. And everybody needs to buy mm -hmm. services or products. So you're, right. you're drawing in your whole community through your business community. That's right. Really good strategy. Well, people follow business. Uh, uh, businesses uh, with, their, with their presence, with their point of sale, with their outreach, uh, are engaging in all aspects of the community. Yeah. And getting businesses on the same page with a message, uh, with a vision, uh, can uh, ripple out throughout the community. 
government follows business, nonprofits follow business. Uh, so it has been very successful. And this program actually in our community now, 92% uh, I think it is, of uh, participating businesses say they would recommend this program, participating in this program to others in their industry, uh -huh. no matter the uh -huh. industry. Okay. And that same amount of, of, of participating businesses, almost all of them, uh, say that uh, they are now themselves thinking local first. So they are... Uh, of course, they, they, they always thought it was important for folks to support local businesses as a local business. Sure, uh, sure. But it really wasn't on the tips of, fo of folks' tongues like it was before this program started mm -hmm. in our community. Now we hear from businesses that two or three times a week, uh, anecdotally, all the time from businesses saying, uh, they get calls a couple times a week saying, are you guys a local independent? Oh, great, I'm coming in, or at, at point of sale at the cash register. I just want you to know that the fact that you are local here yeah. matters to me, and that's why I'm in today. Uh, and, and they're doing the same thing. The businesses are also choosing local uh, graphic designers or insurance agents or banks or products as much as possible. Which, of course, keeps your dollars floating out through your community a lot more instead of going off to some big chain's headquarters in some other city. Well, that's the... the, the the principle of the economic multiplier mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. if I buy local apples from Bellwood Acres Apple Farm in my community through my food pavilion local grocery store that not only am I supporting the frontline retail staff at that grocery store I'm, I'm supporting all of their senior management uh, their, their, their purchasing department their marketing department their operations yeah. and finance and all those jobs and the fact that they are more likely as a, a local business to choose some of those other local services, yes, the yes. banks, the yes. graphic designers, etc. And so is that farmer, the local Bellwood Acres apple farm. Uh, and so is each of those folks that they're, they're using locally. It's rippling out. They're all paying taxes locally. We're all benefiting from the services of our local government. So that's that, that principle of the economic multiplier. So going back for a second, about how big the city is Bellingham and what kind of industry do you have here? Sure. For context, we have a county of about 200,000 people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and several small cities. The largest city within that county being Bellingham at 75 to 80,000 people. Okay. And uh, we are a community of small businesses. So we have uh, a couple larger employers like our university, government, uh, schools and hospital um, but other than that, it's really a lot of small businesses. Uh, and we've actually now been ranked as a really great place to start a business. And our Small Business Development Center has been quoted in, in our local newspaper as saying uh, they really believe that the reason uh, businesses are so successful from startup to uh, actually staying in business in our community is both because of the services our community offers in mm -hmm. supporting them and because people care about local now where we are. People want to buy and support and choose that new local business that's opened in our community. So you have taken that awareness from ZIP mm -hmm. up to some fairly high level, it would seem to me. Right. We, we, we did. I mentioned an anecdote before about the business, businesses telling us people were calling them two mm -hmm. or three times a week. Well, we have many anecdotes like that. We have uh, one that I, that I enjoyed is... Uh, uh, a tourist was in visiting a local running shop and he said, now I need to make some errands later today, where's your Walmart? And the guy said, actually don't know. And he said, uh, what, what do you mean you don't know? Of course you know where your Walmart is. And he said, I've never been there myself, but what do you need? I, I could probably help you find what you need. And he, so he told him, a little frustrated, but told him and, and the guy said, well actually Jaeger Sporting Goods could, could offer you that. Mm -hmm. and." Um, Which is a local store. It's a local store. Why don't you go there? Here's directions. Here's my cell phone. If you don't find it there, then uh, call me, and I'll tell you somewhere else you wow. could find that. What service? What service? <laughs> and and the guy left a little exasperated, I hear, and went to that Jaeger store though, and called him on his cell phone later and said, "I get what you're doing there, and I just want to say thank you. It actually was a really great experience. I found exactly what I needed for a great price, and I had a unique time. You know, it was something mm -hmm. that I haven't seen in every mm -hmm. other community. So mm -hmm. thank you. And so we'd hear anecdote by anecdote about that. But finally, last year, although it seemed to us the program was very successful, very visible, and we've received numerous kudos from our governor saying she wanted this emulated throughout the right. state to our right. um, then mayor saying uh, he considered us to be his most important economic development agency. Yeah. We'd heard this kind of thing, and yet you don't know if you're a little bit in your bubble, a little bit with people that are yeah. of like mind. So we hired an independent research firm. And she did, or her firm did, a uh, uh, 
a great survey of the whole community that was statistically significant within a couple percentage points and asked folks uh, about this program. And, and, and the results were pretty astounding. Actually, uh, fully 69% of our community recognizes the program and logo. Wow. And three in five households, any household, so retiree, student, anyone in between, uh, three in five households claim that this program has changed their, pur their purchasing behavior and they are now thinking local first. And I said to, the, uh, to Dr. Jewell, the, the lead researcher there, um, that seems really good, right? And she said, Michelle, if one in five households would say that, that they've actually changed their purchasing behavior because of this particular program, you should feel thrilled. To say three in five, that means we've had a cultural shift in our community. People are thinking local first. Congratulations. Well, it's very exciting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, know, to, know, to get that, that credi right. credible you know, verification of that. That's right, right. So if other communities want to follow in your footsteps, what kind of advice, what kind of a way do you approach it? Do you have help for them in some sure. way? Well, that Think Local First program specifically, uh, we actually uh, documented for Bali, for the Business Alliance for Local Living Economies. I wrote a 100-page how-to kit, and you can buy it online right from them. It's, from it's Bali, their, the Business Alliance for Local Living Economies. Great. Yeah, and their website is livingeconomies.org, and you can okay. buy it there. Uh, but for the whole of the organization, uh, I think the reason that this, this campaign has been so successful in our community is that it's not just about buying. It's not just about um, thinking local when you buy. It's about being a local. It's about pride in place. Some of the earliest uh, designs that were submitted to me from graphic designers when I was uh, first creating this program were of shopping bags. And I said, oh, no, that's not it at all. Mm -hmm. It's about what, what makes us proud to call this place our one-of-a-kind unique place on ah. earth. What, what, why do we love living here? It's the kind of place people like, and uh, they feel proud to be there. I wanted something that moms would want to put on their kids' T-shirts, that kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, that's not a shopping bag. And so uh, we, we came up with a logo that was of, our, of Mount Baker, our, our local mountain. Yes. And it says, think local, buy local, be local. Get out there and be somebody that cares about this place. Think about how you can contribute to this place. Buy from other people who are contributing to this place. So it's you're building civic pride. I mean, That's pride right. in community, pride right. in place, right. which goes beyond just buying. I really Absolutely. appreciate that yep. because, because if, if, if people are sharing and celebrating the uniqueness of your region, right. It's like an antidote to globalization, to a homogenization in our culture. Right, right, an antidote to homogenization, and that's, that's something that, uh, that, that people crave today. Uh, there's, there used to be the opportunity, I think, to have the couple of chain stores in your town that attracted other towns to come shop in your area, but, but nowadays those are so uniformly yeah. available that it's not unique or special to go to that experience that we've all had of landing at some airport going to a meeting at some hotel nearby, having left, never having experienced that place, right. never f feeling like, I, I can't even remember to, to tell my husband which city I was in, which state I was in. And, yeah. uh, uh, and, and there's been research that show that tourists want to go to a place anymore that gives them the sense of being someplace, not just any place USA. And even that uh, folks who have the means, the resources to work from wherever they want to in the world, from a laptop, bring their financial and intellectual mm -hmm. capital and start new businesses are choosing places that mm -hmm. have an authentic community, a real sense of place, and are preserving their natural spaces and their, their water and their air, uh, the health of those things. And I would guess that by your, by your kind of events, your celebrations, your marketplace events and stuff, you are helping to build just that face, you know, people, networking with people again. Well, we, for, for all, all of the products and services that we offer our businesses through the years, things from our coupon book that's associated with the Think Local First program, it's, it's actually the, the best-selling book at our local bookstore and a great service for business members to, to be in or uh, uh, the, the kinds of 
specific hands-on training we give to folks in the construction industry on how to build green and how to plan for green, pedestrian-friendly, high-efficiency, energy-efficient buildings and communities, etc. All the things that people say, I'm learning from you, I'm getting benefit from you. Uh, still, in every survey we do with our members, the number one thing that they say that they most enjoy is each other. Finding a community mm -hmm. of peers that share their values, that they can learn from, that they're inspired by, and that uh, we've had people say, I've lived here my whole life and I've never felt such a sense of community. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah, right. I mean, you've got so much can be built from there. Sounds like, I mean, the way you were approaching this is so positive. Right. It's not about you should be green or right. you should be sustainable. Right. So tell us a little bit about that attitude that you bring to this. Well, in fact, we, we even say that. Uh, instead of saying you should be green or you should be sustainable, that we never want to be shooting on anyone, that instead we wanted to inspire them. And so we, we, one of our, our core tenants, and we have all of these principles listed on our website, but is to lead by example. Mm. We just simply never say what we're against. We always say what we're for. Mm -hmm. uh, the world anymore, I, I think there, it, it's, it's rare. I think there was a time for a while uh, when it made sense that people were needing to sort of shout about what was wrong. So but, we were aware of it, at right, least. Because we needed the people on the edge saying, hello, wake up. But mm -hmm. nowadays, it's yeah. really reached out there. People yeah. are, know there's a problem. Uh, but just like in the 70s and 60s when there was an awareness and people acted, uh, someone told me that recently, that 90% that of the time we're working toward the change, at 10% of the time there's these real openings in society where you have the opportunity to do something significant. And we're in one of those right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where people are aware, mm -hmm. but you need to provide them professional, um, workable solutions, things that they can get involved with to make a difference. And if, and if you don't, and if they aren't workable, then people will reject them again and continue yeah. on their way. Uh, so, so it's up to all of us who care about this right now uh, to, to, very, to, to give them specific solutions in a positive way and to appreciate people as they are making efforts. To say, thank you for doing... Uh, instead of saying... Uh, well, gosh, you started to ride the bus only one day a week? Come on, you know, what's that going to do? We, we need you to ride seven days. Uh, you need to say thank you for riding the bus yes. one day a week. Yes. That's great. Yes. If only everyone rode the bus one day a week. And, and they'll start to recognize, uh, uh, feel good about that and continue down that path. And feel part of. I mean, that that little step is a step in the right direction. That's and right. they're not alone in that. Right. I mean, I think that's a big part of what I see is people saying, well, I, I do want to help with the petroleum issue. I mean, I realize the prices are going to go up. There is less of it. What can we do? Right. That even a small step is worth saying, good. good absolutely. For you. Absolutely. We, we, another one of our tenants is that we're all on a path. So, in fact, mm. when we started Sustainable mm. Connections, we said, okay, who should be a member? Okay. Uh, sustainable businesses. Okay. Let's think, of, let's make a list. Sustainable businesses. Who's sustainable? Who has done the natural step for their construction company and they've really thought about environmental impact. Oh, and they're incredible employers. They actually um, really are helping their employees to, on a career path. Uh, oh, and they are uh, contributing to the local economy at the maximum level that they can. Oh, and they are incredible community stewards and they're uh, helping the Goodness. schools. And the I mean, the stakes get... I mean yeah, one person is a heritage kind of business in our community, and they are incredible employers. They've been around 150 years, but they've never thought about the environmental impact. Another business is all about environment, but frankly, they're horrible employers. You know, we all are somewhere on the path, and we're all okay. learning. So what we did instead was to say, anyone who is uh, able to, to, to make decisions for their business, right. because they're fully independent and is located in our community, so they mm -hmm. can attend meetings and we can work together, uh, and they're interested in moving down the path, we welcome them. And that's all it takes to be a member. That's beautiful. That's a big door. We only have about four or five minutes left. Okay. So what haven't we covered, particularly for people who want to start into this path right. for their, their business? Sure. Well, for me, I think the most important thing that I found, uh, the only magic key, uh, has been the, the core of people that are involved, the, the, mm. the members as decision makers. Uh, for, for, for us and in other communities where I've helped folks to, to get started with this, uh, you need to find the most uh, credible, successful, well-loved businesses in your town to be at the core of this if you want other businesses to pay uh -huh. attention. Uh -huh. People uh, want to do what other peers are doing. And the first thing you'll get asked is, well, who else is involved? So you need to have coffee with individual businesses that become inspired and become the spokespeople and leaders for your organization. Okay. 
If you are a, uh, a community activist that cares very much about these issues, that's wonderful. And there could be lots of places that you should be active in your community and lots of things that need worked on from salmon habitat restoration to, to schools and kids, and it's, it's all a piece of the puzzle. But if you want to make change through business specifically as one piece of that puzzle, mm -hmm. then you need businesses leading that change. Yes. Uh, we need peer-to-peer -peer kind of uh, inspiration and folks who can say, I, I know that that can work in a business. I've thought about how that would act at point of sale, this activity. I, I know what's reasonable and practical to actually do. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the approaches to take. I know I've got peers I can call who will, be, who will join this and who will join me in sponsoring it financially to get it off the ground. So that's the only um, magic I found that has to happen. Is it has, those are people who are living by example, right. businesses, right. starting that example. Right. But what I hear in there is that that sense of cooperating with each other, mm -hmm. helping each other, mm -hmm. is stronger than competition, if you right. will. And in a sense, stronger than to be competition against the big box, the Walmarts, the big box stores in your community. Right, yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly right. We don't need any more people, well, it, Th these folks are looking for uh, uh, what can they? What is the positive difference that they can make? What is the the solution that they can make? And and there's nothing wrong with uh, having fun and enjoying your life in doing that. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, making it a better party is another one of our core. Making it a better party. That's right. <laughs> that is a fabulous way to build community. It it has worked, and it and this 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 approach of 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 leading down the path rather than. Uh, feeling and uh, coming at it from a perspective of abundance rather than fear that maybe some business down the road could greenwash, yeah. etc. Yeah. Uh, coming at it that we're all on the path has led to some great change. For example, one business owner who I know joined this this uh, organization because of the Think Local bi campaign mm -hmm. in particular. Mm -hmm. He really was a, a long-term business in the community and believed in supporting other local businesses, but had never thought about his environmental impact and really wasn't interested in it. Uh, we, we actually profiled some great aspects of his business uh, in one of our Think Local posters. And on it, I'd said something about how uh, downtown businesses can uh, are better for the environment, you're not uh, sprawling out. And he said, Michelle, could I, could I change that fact on my poster to something more about jobs? And I said, sure. And so we did that. And then a year later, we started something called the Green Power Community Challenge, where we were asking governments, yeah. citizens, businesses to sign up for renewable energy, to switch to renewable energy. He was the first business to sign up 100% renewable energy because he'd been around these peers, yeah. seen other people who he considered to be successful and credible, caring about this whole picture, and feeling ever more like a steward of our place. And that challenge, that Green Power Community Challenge, has actually brought our community just in the last 10 months from our community using 0.6% of all of our electricity from renewable sources like wind, sun, and cow power to now 12% with the, the largest green power fabulous. community in the country right now. Congratulations okay. on all fronts. <laughs> Thank you for well, joining you're me. you're welcome. I have enjoyed it. This is great. You're watching Peak Moment, Community Responses for a Changing Energy Future. I'm Jenea Donaldson. Join us next time 